again to another program of Searching for Answers. My name is Carolyn Thompson, and on my right is... Richard Rice, School of Religion, Loma Linda University. John Jones, La Sierra University, the School of Religion. Michael Connect, Loma Linda University Medical Center. Roy Branson, School of Religion, Loma Linda University. Now, we are in the book of John, and we just completed or almost completed the fourth chapter so we'll we hope that you will gather some of your books some of your maybe you have a William Barclay you'd like to follow along with us I think he's very good at explaining things and also Acts of the Apostles and in the meantime I'm going to ask my good friend Roy Branson will you take up and read where we just left off all right this is uh, chapter 4, verse 27. Okay. And the scene is the disciples coming to join Jesus mm -hmm. after the, his conversation with the woman at the well in Samaria. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come. See a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. Mm -hmm. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Mm. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? <laughs> My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Mm -hmm. Mm, all right. Can you give us a little brief description of what Jesus is saying here? Well, <clears throat> this is an internal debate within the, Jesus and his followers, it seems yes. to me. And by this time, the woman at the well is a figure that's off to one side, mm -hmm. but she's active, and so here come the Samaritan. And it's odd, isn't it? She leaves her jar. That's an interesting little detail. I thought of that, too. You Doesn't never it? leave your jar. Right. <laughs> so it's a, it's a very nice literary uh, mm -hmm. detail to put in here because she's rushing. Mm -hmm. And then these other people come out. But one thing that's interesting is that they are not a part of this conversation. That's right. They may or may not be hearing it, but they're not a part of it. I'll, I, I've set it up. Let the, the other people All can right. say let's, what's the Let's, let's what's listen going to John on. Jones here. Well, um, you set it up very well. Um, the fact is that we see already in the early church that same kind of inner tension, don't we? Paul has to write to the church members in Corinth the same kind of situation. There are those who who do pioneering work. There are those who follow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, here's Paul writing to 1 Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse uh, 5 and following. And this is Revised Standard. Who is Apollos? What is Paul? They're only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each one his appropriate mm -hmm. role. I planted, Apollos watered, but it's really God who gives the growth. Yeah. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. It's God who gives the growth. And the one who plants, the one who waters of common purpose, they each receive their wages according to their own labor. We are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. It's actually you who matter more than anyone here. So again, um, even here we have, I think, an anticipation perhaps of um, maybe some tension within the early Christian church itself. Now, after Jesus' time, this saying may have been pertinent uh, to the idea of planting and reaping, rejoicing together. Here's rejoicing again once more. Uh, yeah, enough said, perhaps. Rick. Well, in the immediate setting here, uh, it's almost as if he's 
preparing the disciples for what's about to happen, mm -hmm. and that is yeah. this crowd is going to descend on them yes. with messianic expectations. This yeah. woman says yeah. you could be the Messiah. Yeah. Well, what are these disciples going to think? I mean, they probably grudgingly interacted with these Samaritans because we know that about the only transactions there were commercial ones, right? So they've managed to, to negotiate this meal. They bring it back, and Jesus launches into this discourse about sowing and reaping and the fields are ready for harvest and then suddenly here come these townspeople ready to be uh, yeah. where were the disciples the where were his disciples at this time where yeah. were they they had yeah. gone into town yeah evidently. but had they come back they'd yeah. come back yeah okay said, and 27. then all right they came back so and said here's you your imagine, meal imagine their shock mm-hmm can you see that? They thought they had finished with these folks. See? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's all we want to do. You know, I just mm -hmm. yeah. want to get my gasoline and get out of town, okay? Right. They got their food. Yeah. Now we can eat and go move on. We don't want to have anything more to do with them. But and here, then Jesus here, is preparing eat, say, them. No. Well, that's sort of the preface, I think. He says, look, you don't realize what's happened while you that's were gone. Right. Mm -hmm. I have been so satisfied with this exchange. And then he goes into this harvest uh, metaphor to say, uh, almost as if to say, great things are about to happen right here. And then no sooner has he said that than the towns, the townspeople descend on them with these <coughs> tremendous expectations about who Jesus is. It must have just and blown I, their minds. And the disciples, I could say, you know, grabbing Jesus, come on, come on. Yeah, want? right. Well, can, can we get out of here? Get I out of here. They're We're coming hungry. after us. But and look at all these Samaritans come. What are they going to think? Come on, we better go. But yeah. the text says here that uh, they were shocked to see him yeah. talking to him, but it says none of them had the nerve to ask yeah. Jesus, <laughs> yeah, like why that. are we talking to her? Yeah, that's good. I mean, Maybe they didn't want to know. Or they, they didn't want afraid. the answer. Yeah, they were <laughs> afraid of what they might never, find out. Never ask a question you don't want the answer to. <laughs> that's that's what yeah. I, say, I can't yeah. help so, uh, underscoring a parallel between the first part of the chapter and the second one. Jesus tells the woman, mm -hmm. you have no idea uh, the... Uh, what kind of water is available to you? Mm -hmm. Living water, mm -hmm. me. And then he tells the disciples, uh, verse 32, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Mm -hmm. So that you can say it's a, myster a mysterious person, Jesus mm -hmm. is a mysterious person, or he's one that is sort of telling people, look, life is more meaningful than you have any idea about. Yes. And I'm here to fill your life with a surplus of meaning. You know. And I have a real chance here to tell these people right. about the living <clears throat> word and the living water. And I'm not going to be taken away by you folks when I have this chance. And the early Christian church felt the same way about water uh, or wine and food. Because <clears throat> they could have a celebration <clears throat> of Jesus <clears throat> that revolved around water and food. And it's being set up here in a sense. These are far more significant than you have any idea about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that surplus of meaning is not available to you if you're going to only go through life in your little bubble. Right. Stay in your box and you will live a flat life. Right. right? Yeah. Jesus is indeed blowing their categories wide open to potential. It's what happens when glory touches That's people's right. lives. That's right. That's right. There's meaning. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like the, the light that is brought from the Shekinah. Yeah. Yeah. You, know? yeah. 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 you have no yeah. idea. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's sacralizing the ordinary. The ordinary. That's right. And that's an important category. Um, it, uh, alongside that, another little footnote, uh, the story is crafted in verse 29 in a way that has this woman come in in a deferential way to the elders who are sitting there stroking their beards in the, in the gateway, uh, waiting for some case to be heard. She does not come streaming and screaming in, you know, but rather the Greek ex and structurally anticipates a negative answer. This, hmm. this wouldn't be the Messiah, would he? Mm. Now, she has her convictions, yeah. but she's not coming in to share her convictions. She's being all deferential. Would you, O oh, honorable wisdom <laughs> bearers, uh, keepers of the tradition and of the gate, go out and please pass judgment on this? And, of course, that's just what they're waiting for. So they harumph and gather their robes about them, and we can see the rest playing out in this way. And she is indeed wise in her approach to these elders of the, of the town. And it's, it's also so interesting that she plays such an important role here. 
Right. You know, I yes. mean, here she is, uh, probably, uh, you know, marginalized yeah. by society, and now she's, she's the bridge to yeah. Jesus. I mean, it, yeah. it's an affirmation of the fact that nobody is dispensable. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody is important. I mean, the most marginalized figure you can think of yeah. may be the bearer of the yeah. greatest message you could ever hear. I, and here I'm just going off into pure conjecture, but you wonder if in the memory of the Christian church, the earliest or one of the earliest Christian Samaritans was a woman. And so there's a memory of this woman. Say what again? <clears throat> that in the early Christian yeah. Christians among the Samaritans, yes. perhaps there's a memory that there was a woman who is the important figure in that Christian community. I, I say this is conjecture. And it had to be a formidable woman if they're going to have that. And here's somebody who, t who is able to converse with Jesus and hold her own. And then, as you point out, uh, brings out the crowd from the, from the city, mm -hmm. convincing the leaders. I don't know, but it would just be very interesting if there's any important woman in the memory of the Christians. In yeah. Well, of course, some people want to say when she starts talking about tells me everything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And she's done a lot. Yeah. That that immediately piques people's interest. I don't know. You can maybe take it in that direction. Yeah. Well, well, I'm I, sure they're... Go ahead. Oh, I say, I think it's affirming that she actually drank the spiritual water, yeah. that, <laughs> the living water that Jesus was talking about, because it says she left yeah. her jar because mm -hmm. yeah. she had tasted something else. Yes. There we go. And then she goes and, as you say, asks this subtle question this, to engage them, to entice them to come out. And at the same time, you can flip it over and Jesus says, I've just received food. Now, isn't yeah. that interesting? Yeah. There's, there's a, mutual, a mutuality about this, isn't there, in their yeah. interaction with each other. So, so, yeah. Have you noticed in verse 39, which we didn't get to? We'll get there. So she's not the, thirsty and he's not hungry. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Yeah. Uh -huh, there yeah. you go. That's, that's, that's my right. conjecture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a little more, but yes, Roy, and it could very well have been. It does appear that the Johanne, the, 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 the circle of John, yes. the, the, the different uh, apostles had different circles. The circle of John seems to have taken its rise in Samaria after oh. the resurrection. There is a good deal of scholarly study, the ink that's been spilled on that one, and it looks like this may have this whole story may have played a particular role in that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, the great story of Nicodemus yeah. would have been a setup mm. for mm. John 4, the yeah, story yeah, of the yeah, Good yeah, Samaritan. Yeah, yeah. I mean the story of the woman yeah, in Samaria, yeah, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, verse now, 39 how does that, how does of chapter work? 4. I don't get it quite. Well, I many <laughs> We've got a Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Just quickly, I, we ordinarily see what Jesus says to Nicodemus as sort of the, a high water mark in the Gospel of John, right? For God so loved the world. Right. And the Samaritan story is kind of, a, well, maybe a shadow of it. But Jesus also talked to the Samaritans. But if what John says is right, that, that yeah. the Samaritan beginning yeah. of Christianity it's the was, icebreaker. was the yeah. big story, yeah. then maybe Jesus' is, you know, breakthrough with Nicodemus mm -hmm. is just kind of an introduction to the real breakthrough, yeah. which is the fact that these Samaritans are accepting Jesus. He's got a sermon, right? He does. Yeah. <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry, let's go Carolyn, ahead I'll with chapter you know. 4, verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything, everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And you know, Roy, I think you have something. Maybe the church did start from that woman's mm -hmm. testimony. Mm -hmm. Could be. Important in their memory. That's right. For me, here, here's the sermon right here, which is, I can't just go by someone else's testimony. I have to have an experience myself yeah. with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's crucial. Yes. You know, Michael, that really hit me between the eyes a few years ago when I heard a sermon on this chapter 
by a woman, hmm. a lady who was a superlative uh, New Testament interpreter uh, at uh, Silliman University in Tumagete in the Philippines. This was at a conference uh, in Indonesia, and she had the morning devotion. There was a, a group of uh, theological professors, um, perhaps 30 some of us, in this room. She had the devotional, she took this chapter, and in a very wonderful way, painted a picture of this woman that was profoundly moving and impressive to me. Uh, I have, of course, taught from Greek from John so often. I, have, I think I could pretty well reconstruct it in Greek from memory if it came to that. But she got something that had missed me entirely before. It was this paragraph that you just read, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. She read that. And then she said, you know, the experience of these villagers is the experience of missionized people. Mm -hmm. who have had a messenger come and introduce us to Jesus. But then, eventually, they turn around and say to the woman, thank you for introducing us to him. Now we've gotten to know him for ourselves, not only through you, as mm -hmm. you've just made the point, Michael. Mm -hmm. And she said, sometimes we in the missionized world, we need to ask the missionaries, thanking them very much, but then say, now would you please get out of the way? Yeah. and allow us to engage this Jesus whom you have introduced us to and get to know him for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that hit me right between the eyes. Yeah. I, this was after I'd done all my doctoral work on culture and communication, Rick, and all. I had been working in Asia trying to distinguish between kernel and husk, right? Mm -hmm. And having my students from Korea, Japan, Africa, wherever. So when I would say to them, think Indonesian, think African, think Japanese. They would often say, yeah, but we're new Christians and we need you to help us know what is kernel and what is husk. We need your guidance. And while I was always deferential to their culture, I felt that was my role, was to step in and help kind of shape and protect that which was kernel anyway. But it was after that that I had to get up and, and walk out. And I walked uh, way down the beach by myself thinking, have I been too controlling? Have I been trying to hang on to the kernel and interpret it for these people? And, and I, I thought of, of where we're told that Jesus relinquished his godness when in the incarnation he entrusted himself to the people mm -hmm. completely. And I wondered if my own hands had been like this in protecting that. There is always that old human drive for control isn't there? Mm -hmm. There's always the temptation to establish a, a congregation for the doctrine of the faith or whatever churchly organization you want to call it um, that wants to say this is the definition. You've got to read the text this way. Here's how you have to understand it. And I asked myself why had she seen this and I hadn't? And it was because she was from the missionized side and I hadn't seen it because I was the missioner. See? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a lesson to me about the fact that different people need to read through their own eyeglasses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and get the point. That moment changed my life. Mm -hmm. I still look to that today as a watershed in my own experience and oh, understanding. That's beautiful. That's, that's reminiscent of what John yeah. the Baptist was saying yeah. in, in a discussion we had a little earlier, right? Where he said, look, Jesus is what it's all about. My ministry and I will now get out of the way yeah. and let you encounter him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an issue of trust, is we have to trust that Jesus will reveal himself to that place, yeah. that culture, that time, in a way that he yeah. deems best. And trusting we have to let it go. And trusting well, the spirit, those yeah. two. Yeah. And that's true, and that may be where the, the contrast between, that we mentioned before, between Nicodemus and the woman at the well, mm -hmm. at least in another way, is helpful to me. Her response was immediate and enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus, we have John, the conversation in John 3, and then he sort of fades into the background and we don't hear about him yeah. till the end of the book. Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe that's another way of emphasizing yeah. the, uh, the difference between the response of Nicodemus and his peers to Jesus and the Samaritans mm -hmm. in that community. Mm -hmm. Here's enthusiasm, immediate mm -hmm. recognition, mm -hmm. takes others a long time. Again, yeah. it's the marginal people that respond immediately. That's right. Yeah. And the established figure yeah. It takes a longer time. Yeah. 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 You know, 
I have to ha I see a little dark shadow, though, in this last part, because I worry that these villagers, and you, you painted a picture in an earlier segment about the, the elders sitting outside the town, you know, stroking their beards. I worry that <clears throat> these people said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Yeah. That there's a kind of, there's a kind yeah. of mm -hmm. a pushing her to one size yeah. here. Bias here, you know. Sure, there is. Thank you, but you're yeah. out of the way now, yeah. and we are close, as close to Jesus as you said that you were, you know. I'd rather not read it that way, Ron. Oh, okay. I'd rather have him say, <laughs> "What you said was great, and look at where it's taken us." See what I mean? Yeah. Without you, we never would have had this experience. Yeah. Can we read it that way too? No, not in that age. <laughs> 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 Well, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> you got a sermon, and you're going to preach it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Michael, you want to say something? No, I, I, I think we've covered that part. Okay. Well, we've got another five minutes here. Who would like to read uh, the next few verses? Um, Michael, would you yes, read those, please? Yes, we'd be happy to. Uh, we'll pick it up in John 4, verse 43. Mm-hmm. At the end of two days, Jesus went on to Galilee. He himself had said that a prophet is not honored in his hometown. Yet the Galileans welcomed him, for they had been in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration and had seen everything he did there. As he traveled through Galilee, he came to Cana, where he had turned the water into wine. There was a government official in the nearby Capernaum whose son was very sick. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged Jesus to come to Capernaum to heal his son, who was about to die. Jesus asked, Will you never believe in me unless you see miraculous signs and wonders? The official pleaded, Lord, please come now before my little boy dies. Then Jesus told him, Go back home. Your son will live. Keep going. And the man believed what Jesus said and started home. While the man was on his way, some of his servants met him with the news that his son was alive and well. He asked them when the boy had begun to get better. And they replied, Yesterday afternoon about one o'clock, his fever suddenly disappeared. And the father realized that that was the very time Jesus had told them, Your son will live. And he and his entire household believed in Jesus. This was the second miraculous sign Jesus did in Galilee after coming from Judea. Boy, that is really, isn't that wonderful? See, and Jesus knew what he was doing, said, you know, he, he hesitated a little bit. You think, well, wasn't Jesus sympathetic with the Father? Of course he was. But he wanted to prove a point that he really was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he said, you can go home. Your son will, will live. I'm, then, uh, I'll never read this passage the same way because not long ago I... Uh, I met a woman who, several years ago, lost yeah. her son in a traffic accident. Oh, my. And she still speaks of him with, with uh, a great deal of, of emotion and mm -hmm. yet at the same time with uh, a great deal of hope. And she said, just in, in the wake of this news that, she, that came to mm -hmm. her, the, the, you know, the worst news a parent can receive, she said she, she just went, one of these situations where you just go to the Bible, you're just saying, God, give me something mm -hmm. here. What am I going to do? And she happened to open the Gospel of John to this passage. Is that and right? And she said, I read the words, your son will live. Oh. And when people have asked her, how can you possibly yeah. handle this tragedy in the way that you have? Mm -hmm. She says, because I have a hope that sustains me. It's so mm -hmm. beautiful. And it comes out of these words, your son will live, which are repeated yes. twice in yes. this uh, passage. Did any of you... Uh, think about a parallel here or a, a juxtaposition. He's in Cana in Galilee where he turned the water into wine yeah. mm -hmm. and he had performed a sign mm -hmm. you yes. know, announcing his power and his authority and how he does it again only it's even more spectacular. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and it's a dramatic transformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there, there is a sense of frustration. Yes. And, and you talk about Jesus not being meek and mild. I mean, here it is. I, I almost feel this frustration from Jesus, verse 48. He says, oh, will you never believe me unless you see miraculous signs and wonders? Is, is he tired of performing them? 
Well, I think he's remembering Cana. You know, he had to do it then, and he's seeming to have to do it now. I mean, the earlier experience in Cana. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it fits with what you're saying. Yeah. But, uh, like, how many times do I have to perform signs and wonders to get through here, you know? It's helpful for us to remember in verse 48 that that odd saying that, that seems to fit so poorly in the story, mm -hmm. um, the you in both, case, both places there is plural, mm. you all. Mm -hmm. It is a reference to the whole generation, the whole populace. It's not targeted at the Father mm -hmm. in and of himself. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a general observation. We do see again a moment of resistance similar to his moment of deflection when Mary comes to him. We're going to have yes. to talk about that some more as mm -hmm. we, in future sessions as we look at this. And when it says this was the second miraculous sign, what's the first one? Is it the it's Cana? The Water Cana. to wine. Water to Cana. Cana. Yeah. yeah. I just hadn't thought of it before, so that Cana is important in this story. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to ask you, Rick, to say a few words before we call it time to move on. Well, I think these two chapters have given us so much to think about. They really, really and, have. And one of the things that's, that's remarkable is the tremendous appeal that mm -hmm. Jesus had to people. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really connected with them. Yes. They came to him with their deepest needs. Nicodemus wants to talk theology. This woman wants to talk theology. Mm -hmm. and, and the chapter concludes with a man who's desperate. Yes. in a situation and hopes beyond hope that Jesus can help. And it he almost does. looks like Jesus is putting him off. Yeah. He says, well, you know, I'm pretty busy, but the, but the Father wouldn't give up. And now this is Carolyn Thompson for Searching for Answers. Until next time, we're going to continue on in the book of John. <laughs>